Okay, welcome to the first episode of Let's Talk Bohurt. Uh, in this sort of podcast, we're going to be going through a few things that lads hook onto and tie themselves in knots about in the Bohurt community. Uh, today, we're going to start on helmets, the good, the bad, the ugly. It's a point that lads are often very passionate about. There's reasons for it. It's, there's an important bit of kit that will save your life, essentially. But on top of that, uh, a fighter's helmet becomes a face to the fighting community. Uh, there's fighters I know by their helmet, but I don't know what they look like out of kit. Um, so people become very passionate and uh, divisive about what their face looks like and how, they, uh, how they're seen out there. And like no other piece of kit, essentially. So um, as we get into this, let's talk some bow hurt. Today with us, we have uh, Ollie, who is uh, assistant AC for the UK. And we have Joel, who's the uh, field captain of ISCA. How are you doing, guys? Not too bad. Hello, how are you Thank doing? You. So, um, helmets themselves, uh, everybody who gets into it, it's always the first thing they want to get next to a sword. And new guys always have the instant instinct to want to get the most unique, interesting bit of kit. And it's not always <laughs> the most sport-optimized bit of kit you can imagine. Um, so there are some universal truths for helmets. For me, it's like I always see two and a half mil hard and steel minimum and two straps to make sure your helmet fits. Is there anything else for you guys that uh, really is universally must be there in a helmet? So I'd like to go back to what you were saying a second ago about your first helmet. Mm -hmm. And I think with the first one, I found that it was the first one I saw. I thought at the time <laughs> it fit. I thought at the time it looked cool and was... Um, and was suitable. It was none of those. It only had one strap. It didn't really fit my head. You could twist it all the way around and I was still yeah, looking yeah, yeah. one way. But that, going back to the first part you said about that being your face, I don't feel like it's me in the list anymore now that I've got my new helmet. You know, yeah, I've yeah. always had the big nose on there, the big yeah. lever to grab it. It really made a difference. Um, that being said, it was wildly impractical. <laughs> I, I can totally relate to you there because um, my first helmet was this fucking thing there. And uh, it got known as the Goblin Elm because it looks like a yeah. Goblin Elm from Labyrinth. But uh, it's perfectly secure. It's shit vision. You can't can't breathe. It's got a lever on the top of it. It's made out of mild steel. It's not an appropriate bow hurt helmet anymore, but it kept me safe for a long time. And like I say, I started when I got a new helmet, I started going to the list and being like, who's that? <laughs> but yourself, Ollie, what sort of things are um, a must-have for you when we come to the helmets universally? Uh, well, really, as sad as this sounds, but authenticity, like your first helmet is basically, well, a helmet is the face of your entire kit, really. Mm. Yeah, So yeah, if you're going to go, basically, if you're going to get a helmet, you need to know it's going to match what other pieces of kit you want to get. And yeah, it needs to be authentic. It's the main thing people can see. Like, look at the picture. What is yeah, the main yeah. piece of armor that you can see the entirety of? And it is the helmet. When you look at the human form, the first thing you look at is the eyes, isn't it? And I think what you're getting out there is a good helmet will hide a multitude of sins. If you've got a good helmet, that's the first thing people are going to look at. And that's, we all know you make your assumptions uh, on someone on the first couple of seconds of talking to them. If you look at a bit of kit and they've got a good helmet, you're automatically going to assume it's a good kit, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, as we can see from the, the photo that I've got up there on the screen at the minute, this is uh, Iska the last time it went into the field up at a uh, Heritage Cup in Wales somewhere. But, um, no. <laughs> there's a broad range of helmets there. And they're all, they're all the Boho optimised ones. We're going to go into those in a moment now. Um, so the first one we're going to get into is... Uh, the old great helm type thing there it's i'm not this is no sort of order um i still think they're an acceptable sort of helmet um for me the benefits for this one are uh, very much it's got no moving parts uh, it's got good wide vision as far as goes for peripheral that's the big thing that you lose in helmets um those are the things that drew me to it in the first place um this one in particular is mild still because i was still on a bit of a mild still think for helmets i now think that's wrong uh, the negatives, the uh, vertical vision wasn't that great and movement was a bit restricted. But uh, what do you guys think about these sort of helmets? Uh, I mean, for me, for me... Go on, no, Ollie. Joel. No, no, Joel, go on. I was going to say, if that helmet looks perfect, I mean, yes, it's got its drawbacks, but in terms of a nice and simple, 
you know, one piece with no moving parts helmet. You can't argue with it. You've got mm. a decent field of vision, which is also, especially for new fighters, it's going to let them feel uh, not as restricted, not as claustrophobic yeah, yeah. in the helmet as, 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 you, as you well know you often get. Um, there's not a lot that can go wrong with it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. You know, I, 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 it hasn't got any um, points or anything that sort of comes out where you could get hooked under. It's nice and round. So when that sword comes striking down, unless you get a dead on blade, there's a good chance you're going to deflect a lot of it. I mean, that looks like the sort of helmet, you know, you, you, you would expect to take a lot of abuse. Um, and that's what you want from it, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it did. Um, I, I wore that to Battle of the Nations, and um, don't get me wrong, I got sparked right out by a Russian halberd, but I don't think any <laughs> helmet would have stopped that with the hit they got on me. But even even though it was mild steel, there's a lot of overlapping plates in there because of the construction of it. It was pretty bomb-proof, but I wouldn't get mild steel again. Um, about yourself, Ollie, you look like you had a bit of a burning point there to come into. Uh, well, helmets like this, I tend to see a lot on new fighters. They tend to go with fully enclosed helmets that are, mm. yeah, bomb-proof. And personally, I think they only really work on certain people with certain stunts and body mechanics. If you're a shorter mm-hmm. guy, you get a bomb-proof helmet like that, you're cutting out your mobility, you're cutting out your... Uh, your vision, yeah, you're yeah, cutting absolutely. out your, your breathing. So for someone to say my size, I'm not particularly tall. If I was to wear something like that, it, it's just going to hamper me. Like, yeah, 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 absolutely. That was one of my points was the movement. Like you see where it comes down and uh, the chin rests on your chest near enough, even when I was moving around. It did restrict my my head movement a lot. Um, the other problem I had with, with this helmet was authenticity. And I was forced to make some change with the Take the Battle of the yeah. Nations which I wasn't a fan of, which uh, if you check your screen out now, this is what I had to do to it was uh, add a chainmail lavender tail oh, yeah, and those yeah. bits of metal that. over the eyes. And I kind of phoned in and I think that looks, I don't like how that looks now, to be honest. Yeah, it doesn't look good, does it? It, it robbed a lot yeah, of the vision out of it. <laughs> no, not a fan of it looks anymore. More acceptable. Looks more acceptable to me for something for, like, like that uh, for maybe even laugh or say uh, IMCF. But this was the changes I was forced to make for HMBA uh, authenticity, and like I say, I wasn't a fan of it. But overall, I think what we can say from that is, um, it's uh, as long as it, you get an AC-approved helmet, they're non-offensive. They're not for a new fight. They're great because you're secure, like I had with that thing up there. I felt safe in there, and that is the important thing to getting people fighting. And if you yeah. are not afraid, but if you've got your concerns about this, well, it's not a bad helmet to start with. Um, negatives are AC can be a bit ropey but as Ollie said it's not the freest of bits of kit to be fighting in uh, any other points about this particular type of helmet guys? yeah just just a quick one on the so how it comes and rests down on almost like your, almost on, on your good collarbone hmm. I mean that itself whilst an absolute pain for mobility it does mean that any shock you take in that helmet is going to go down into your body rather than down into your neck um, uh, you say that, but I could, jo- I could try and uh, splice it into this when we edit for people to see. But I'll put the uh, bit of footage of me getting knocked right out. Сейчас мы узнаем, кто же станет аутсайдером в этом бою, потому что, друзья, начинается бой Великобритания Россия финальный бой в номинации 12 на 12 на сегодняшний день он станет решающим и последним. Ой, 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 ой! Отличный удар, Андрей Кисилисов гол. Uh, I think we'd all like to see that, Barnes. Yeah, I, d- I don't think any sort of helmet would have saved it, but uh, yeah, you're not wrong there. So uh, if we move on now to the next sort of helmet, um, there's two types of helmet I'm going to throw into one here. I'm going to call them visored bayonets. It's these clap visors, and uh, I'll give you a sneak peek here. The Romance of Alexander type helmets here. I, I kind of rolled them into one because I think they've got a lot of the same uh, profs and dips, just while looking yeah, slightly that's... different. They're from the same kind of historical period, to be fair. They are from, I would say, just check it out. Uh, they're kind of your standard helmet from about 1330 to 1370. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, your kind of your flat faces. Yeah, good helmet. Uh, uh, my only kind of, because that's me there on the left, uh, my biggest worry was uh, my nose. I don't like anything that is so close to my nose. Uh, <laughs> no, I've got a massive vision. beak as well, so uh, that is a concern for me a lot of the time. And vision and 
breathability and it was uh, fairly awful. Yeah, that, that is a problem with... But there'll be individual ones. I think one of the strengths of going for this type of helmet is that there's a lot of variation of flexibility in what you're going to have on your face mask. Whichever type you go for, like the ROA helmets have a wider field of view, for example. But uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of clap visors out there and a lot of visors out there for different sort of breathing and vision opportunities. Um, now, the big things for me... Uh, it's a non-offensive helmet. As you say, it's a very standard helmet. No one's going to look at that and straight away get, get their back up. It's a grey man yeah. helmet. Um, negative for me, the big one on this sort of helmet is moving parts. Yeah, the advantage of having a visor you can whack up between rounds. I'm not a fan of it because uh, I don't know if it's particularly visible here. But it is here. This helmet is going to be kept strap shut during a fight by a little leather strap. If I see that, it's going to get cut. That's it. <laughs> you know, and if you're having your entire involvement on the field decided by a two millimeter thick strip of leather, there's problems there. So you're going to end up either wanting someone who's got that little button on the top of them. I don't know what what do yeah. what does authenticity think about those? Probably not not a lot. And when I see that, I think I can shield punch that and flip his visor up. There's nothing like and the shot of a man who's just been exposed to the elements in the middle of a fight. Well, having had my helmet come off in the middle of a fight, I can assure you it was absolutely terrifying. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's not an enjoyable Don't... experience. No, um, it is not. <laughs> and, and, the, and the worst thing is, if you get sat down because of that, it's not a quick fix. You've got to take a rivet off, you've got to put a new strap on, or you can tape it. Oh, it's, it's a bag of bastards. That's my biggest problem with this type of helmet. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, that massive negative, it just uh, it just drowns the positives. You know, it, uh, the idea of being able to pop your face up, have a sip of water, get a bit of fresh, cool air. You know, all those are fantastic. But just having that massive weakness and that big button on your forehead that says, "Please hit me and take me out of the fight without even trying." Yeah. You can't compete yeah. with that. So my first helmet up there was a clap visor, and I ended up riveting it shut just because in a training session I had it peeled open. I was like, "Oh, this is a good." half hour fix now <laughs> you know but yeah i can't go it's through a a to me personally anything else to say about those guys uh i'd say one of the positives is it's from the main family of helmet that you want to be looking at in this sport which is the bass for that yep yep great maneuverability it's basically a helmet that sits on your head and allows you to look mm -hmm. uh it is one of, say, with uh, your great helm, one of the kind of the common, I'd say, uh, one of the types of helmets that new fighters tend to go straight for because they want to protect their face, they want to protect their eyes. Mm -hmm. and new fighters, a lot of the time, when they get kicked and you'll have a look at them in their kit for the first first few tournaments they're in, you'll see rondels covering every single gap. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us have still got rondels sure. covering things, Ollie. <laughs> but it's where it's where people begin in the sport and they take kind of like they become over engineer things, they become overly safe. But then as they get more experience you see things start to come off. Yeah. Start to change. People try to protect themselves to the point of danger. Yes, yeah. that's very true. Yeah. So a lot of people when they come into the sport and they're looking at helmets for the first time, they will be they'll be looking at not so much clap visors anymore. Clap visors seem to be a falling out of fashion. Uh, out of vogue. A lot more, yeah, you're seeing a lot more uh, kind of romance of Alexander, Griffin mm. bassinet, plow face bassinet. They seem mm -hmm. to be more popular for your kind of your full face helmet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, one of the major positives is you have got full movement. Mm -hmm. Major negative is that that visor is going to fly open. It is at some point going to happen. Okay, yeah. so that is going to lead me on to the next one. We all know what that is, don't we, boys? Basic bitch wolf hair. Fucking wolf helm master race, mate. <laughs> this is the helmet. It is the helmet oh, to go hurt. My old Russian cosmonaut wolf rib. This helmet does it all, has it all, and absolutely no negatives in my mind. Other than those big holes to get things caught in. Well, it doesn't happen, though. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't happen, mate. I've, I've never had anything go through my visor. I have had a sword go in my mouth once. 
Only once. <laughs> um, but overall, this helmet yeah, what? gives you everything. It gives you the vision. It gives you the uh, maneuverability. You get a nice breeze on your face when you're having a rest. Um, you can drink freely. You can eat in it. You don't even need to take the thing off. Um, you don't have to have chainmail on there. You can have a nice uh, fabric avantail so you can look smart. Easily repairable in that manner and removes the weight. Um, so I've got another one here. This is my current one, fabric avantail. Um, oh, that looks nice. On that. Yeah, it looks all right. Then it's a bit uh, machine priest of Mars at the moment, so I've got to sort that out. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we'll you can do. And as you see, this is riveted shut straight away. Um, I I can't see an argument for any other sort of helmet having tried it on. The only argument against it is, say, newer fighters. Like when I first got into sport, I looked at that, I went, "No, are you stupid?" Yeah. But it's the the holes are relative. They might look big now, but the dimensions are quite small. Your things are at an angle. Your head's always moving. You're not allowed to thrust. It's very rare that anything goes in there. And the biggest advantage of it, um, go back to Ollie's, is that you can see how it bulges away from the face. Uh, a cross guard can only be th three and a half centimeters away from the edge of your fist. His cage is more than three and a half centimeters away from his face. His face is safe. From You can get punched in the face all day long with a long sword and he's going to be fine. Um, the disadvantage is it's scary. <laughs> like, when new fighters get in, they put that on, they're scared. You've got to condition yourself to see an axe flying towards your face and you just go, it's all right, this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it takes some mental conditioning but um, th this helmet polarizes people massively what do you guys think as uh as part of the wolf rib master race uh the first member of the wolf rib master race in isca if i uh if i do say uh, i think they're perfect i think they're brilliant helmet uh great vision great breathability good movement on the head Oh, that was my last wolf rib. That was the first one I bought. It uh, wasn't greatly shaped. It wasn't entirely up to authenticity standards. I had to have an extra rib put on there. But uh, as a helmet, it was great. Bumproof. And yeah, I wasn't coming out of rounds gasping and unable to breathe. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I really like them as well. I haven't, I haven't fought in one yet. I almost bought one, but that was... That, that somebody else nabbed that first um it's a nice helmet it's it, it would be i think for certainly for experience fighters absolutely you can you, it, it's moving up to that next level where you can see what you're doing you have it you can eat you can drink you can do all that you can be heard a bit better i mean mm. that's something we haven't really mentioned yet is yeah, when yeah, you're absolutely. screaming come and bloody help me somebody's hitting me with a two-handed axe if you don't have two and a half millimeters of metal in front of your mouth, yeah. there's a better chance of somebody hearing you, isn't there? And even smaller um, things like talking to your support between rounds, like, yeah, pass me that sword, please. What? Pass what? me that sword, please. And they start <laughs> trying to give you like an apple or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it just it just makes life so much more pleasant to be in one. Like I don't have to take mine off most of the time. It gets a bit warm, maybe. Yeah. But um, I mean, that's going to be true of any helmet, isn't it? It is, yeah. You know, you've got all that wool in there. You've got a bunch of metal sat on your head and you're sat in the sun. But in comparison to wearing my great helmet, I could just face the wind and just be like, oh, nice. It's all weird. See, I, I'd argue with your point, Joel, where you said uh, it's for more experienced fighters. I'd, I'd go out and I'd say to kind of beginner fighters, get a wall grip, man. Yeah. Uh, obviously, so many new fighters are getting closed helmets. They come out of their first round and they're having a full-on panic attack because they can't mm -hmm. breathe properly. Maybe they're not positioned properly. The, the helmet it's panic Jesus. is a real thing. We've seen them so many times. Yeah. Everybody has one. They get a helmet on. It's right there. They think they can't breathe. They've just been like, <laughs> just been beaten up and put on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> they can't see. They can't breathe. And they have a panic. And I, I think you'd have less of that in a wolf rib. It's still going to exist. But, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if we got them in wolf rib sooner and got the conditioning of having X's coming towards your face being okay, the, the sooner they'd be happy with it. Now, the, the, yeah. the, uh, the elephant in the room when it comes to the wolf rib is authenticity. Because obviously, yeah, uh, like, none of them exist in reality. And there's well, like two drawings of them from like Jesus getting crucified or something, isn't it? Yeah, the earliest example of the wolf rib in a manuscript comes from... Uh, sorry, I've got to check my notes. 
It does come from a biblical painting that was done by an artist, I can't pronounce his name, between uh, 1380, 1380 and 1390. Mm-hmm. So that does put it in pretty much a right period. But it comes from a painting. It's from a biblical theme. So mm-hmm. basically, is it their version of a fantasy film? But this isn't the rest it? of the yeah. kit in those paintings pretty accurate? And a fantastic source for, I think it's isn't it, a lot of floating kit is in there and... Yeah, but uh, at that time they were kind of in their biblical references. They were looking back at classical armor, kind of the mm. way the way we look back at medieval armor. They were looking back and interpreting classical armor, such as that was a period where you started to see the bar, bar boot was beginning to be produced in Italy, and the bar boot was based off Corinthian we'll, helmets. We'll get onto that. So, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's a big. Was it a helmet that was a uh, you know, widely used, or, yeah. See, but, for me, it's, that know, it exists in that drawing, and that tournaments happen, and that it's so good for it. I, I cannot accept that this, or something roughly like it, didn't exist on the tournament field. I, I can't accept. It must have been something yeah. like it. Like, yeah. you see the trellis visors and all of that, I can't imagine something like this didn't happen. Well, it's basically a bucket with, with a few bars wrapped around it, isn't it? I mean, that, yeah, that's very sure. simple for somebody to come up with. Um... So, My only thing I'd like to add on mm-hmm. the wolf ribs is going back right back to the beginning where we talked about it's your identity, is your helmet. Yeah, yeah. If everyone and your everyone and the mum's wearing a wolf rib, do you really feel like you've got that identity? You know, you're going to see how everyone's got a wolf rib. Well, I'm going to mm-hmm. deliberately pick something arguably They're, worse because yeah. we are pretty pretty agreed on wolf ribs being, being the shit. There is a lot of au contrariness about it. There uh, is. I think as the fighter becomes more experienced and they get more into it, they lose a bit of that element of the ego of yeah. individuality. Of the, the little bit of the role playing side of it. If I'm, you know, although it's a sport, you do when people start off, you know, well, well I'm a knight, I'm going to go and fight. You lose that, and like this helmet, this helmet is so widely used because of just how good it is for the sport and for sportsmen. You know, it is the sportsman's helmet. Yeah, um, the thing is, like, we've all done it. You, you all get a bit of ego. You want to see yourself. You want to look good. I used to paint the helmet red so I could see myself in videos, for Christ's sake. But <laughs> ego soon has become less important when you start getting your teeth out your arsehole yeah. because someone's better than you and yeah. you can't breathe and you get your head. I got relaxed. My head kept getting twisted off. And um, I think you can still have your identity in this because people can see your face. You still can be unique with how you uh, layer up your face grill. And um, again, you have brilliant opportunity when it comes to your uh, Aventail like this. You can flash an amazing amount of uh, effort into that. And I'm sure everyone will know where the Tech Priest of Mars is roaming about when I've got my helmet on. Um, <laughs> you, know, it's, you have to have heraldry on it, for example. You know, it's plenty of, uh, plenty of opportunity there, I believe. Well, the wolf rib is the booming helmet. It's become a lot more popular in, I think, the last three, four years within the sport. Mm. Before then, it was the nasal that was the go-to sport for... On that point, I think it's time to move on to the nasal. Another polarising helmet for me. It was incredibly popular, as you say, about three or four years ago. Um, I've got strong feelings about this one. A lot of people love it. Um, I don't. I think it's the worst helmet out there, personally. But what do you guys think? Well, I mean, this is me in my nasal. Um, and obviously, my previous one was that hound skull. Mm-hmm. And in terms of vision and breathing, like miles better. In terms of fit, that particular one, miles mm-hmm. better. Um, in terms of like sports utilization, miles better. It's it's all fairly slopey. Yeah, there's a little bit of a point on the top, but it's not enough for you to mm-hmm. really grab hold of, unlike say the previous one. Uh, but obviously the real downside is those two big nice gaps. Um, yeah, I like you know, that. If you get that's a sword strike, it comes. That, that is the difference oh. with the wolf rib. Is that that is right against your face. You ain't got three and a half centimeters from the edge to your eyes. Uh, no. I, I think they're a liability for that. And the biggest thing that no one considers is as you look down the middle of the nose, that's that's sloping stuff straight into your eyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every face injury I've ever seen in this sport has come from a nasal wearer. Yeah. Uh, before I got a wolf rib, I was a nasal wearer. And uh, what really put me off was I got shield punched and uh, I had 
it just came back into my mm. face. And that for me was, I don't think they're bad helmets. I think they're great. You know, they have all of the same kind of attributes I'd say that the wolf rib has. I don't think they do at all. Because I think everything but, that does, the wolf rib does better and safer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But they have the big drawback and the negative of you have a great big piece of steel closer to your face and mm-hmm. it can be hit back into your face. See, and, and this is the other point. Um, that, that nasal directs things straight in. You've got two big holes that don't move as much and that two individually bigger holes. You mm. don't have the cage yeah. keeping things away from your face. You've got to have chain mail on it. Um, and... <sighs> Which isn't like, as easy to clean or replace as, a, as an no. alligator tail. If your alligator tail gets ripped and just sew that together. And, and the biggest uh, drawback of the wolf rib that we came up with they, was authenticity. Now let's look at the authenticity of these things. That is not That's what a nasal helmet looks like. That's not what they look this like. Is... These are pure fantasy. No. Well, this is one of the big problems with nasal helmets. They exploded in popularity in the sport, and uh, then everyone and their mother was making nasal helmets. Mm. So it's now become hard to actually buy a nasal helm from an armourer and know for definite that it is authentic because there mm. are so many different armourers using different patterns, different ideas, you know, and there's so many second-hand nasal helms that you can buy that yeah. may not pass HMB authenticity. Yeah, I think because they had their explosion in popularity before authenticity pulled their fingers out and put out some real documents. So it was like the wild west of authenticity. Yeah, it was back... Uh, <laughs> Oh, when was it? Was it Battle of the Nations 2016? I think kind of was the the year of the nasal hound. Hmm. And since then, they kind of yeah. Since about two, late 2017, you've seen the wolf rib has started to come in, but before then, everyone had a nasal hound. Yeah, and like this, this is a personal thing, but for me, aesthetically, I think they're awful. Like that bar is never straight like it's supposed to be. It's always curved. So from the side, you just look like Squidward. <laughs> and, and I can't hack it. I ate them. I ate them. But for me, that doesn't do anything that a wolf rib doesn't do. I mean, look, it, it just sticks out really like that, doesn't it? So you actually, mm. you, you do have a bit more space. Look, you've got a bit more space there. Um, probably three and a half centimetres, I would say. Mm. You probably would be all right on that. But it does stick out like a big old nose, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so that's uh, that's all the strong opinions. So um, those I think we've gone through are the uh, most optimised and commonly used helmets in the sport. So as we say, new people get into the sport, they decide what they want their face to look like, they see everyone wearing these and they go, oh, so those are the best helmets for the sport. No, I want to wear this. And they come to you with some weird shit. So here are some of the uh, other helmets that pop up occasionally, whereas they can be quite beautiful, authentic, or they're not really ideal for what we do so first up the salad mm. obviously you see this is being worn at battle of the nations by the uh, sticker on his or by battle of the nations fight by the sticker on his halberd uh oh cool cheers um what do you guys think of this sort of helmet I mean, that would be a big no from me all day long. You know, you've got a visor there. I don't know if his is shut shut, but it doesn't mm. look like there's a that, that strap on the neck here. I mean, you're just asking for that to come off. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, that doesn't even look like it wants, wants to stay there. It wants like it to slide up. The amount of visibility you've got, pff, it's just a crap helmet. It I mean, looks cool. I don't know how big his nose is, but if it's anything like me, it's going to be pushing that visor up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be terrified That's wearing that mate. thing. But, um, I think George from the Northern Wolves is currently working on like a Boha optimized one that works along the lines of having a hidden cage like a nasal. Um, okay. But, uh, no, I'm not a fan. Um, Lolly? From what I've, the thing is, the uh, most of the uh, salaries I've seen in this sport like this, this is a different one. I haven't seen this one. This seems fairly uh, unchanged and authentic. But most of the salaries I've seen have been used by uh, Americans. They seem to be very popular in America. It's kind of that Darth Vader thing mm. they all want to go with. Mm, yeah. um, 
The American salaries I've seen have been sports optimized to such a point that they're not really salaries anymore. And it's kind of a bit like, well, you know, why didn't you just buy another helmet? You know, yeah. you went yeah. to a lot of work to try and make something happen, which I still wouldn't say is a. Uh, like the figures of a salet on the back, you've got the lobster tail, mm-hmm. and you know if I'm a halberdier, you shouldn't be hitting that area. But if you catch the end of that tail, the front of the helmet's going to shoot up. Yeah. Uh, Big so thing for me is the complexity of the helmet. Even if you make yeah. a bowhurt ready one, you look at all them rivets. You got you got have some work to do after a tournament. Well, Absolutely. also look at the look at the working parts. But look at where the the bevoir or the gorget under the neck points into your neck someone hits you just there on the visor that's going to poke straight back into your imagine catching a halberd there (laughs) yeah you won't be speaking for a week will you (laughs) no basically you've got a helmet that amounts to basically put the seesaw on your head yeah you've got something that's going to hit on the back and make it fly forward and catch you in the bottom of the chin and something that could go right back into your neck, and that's without saying, look at the look at the gap for your eyes. Look yeah, at how great that is. And um, I, th- I think they they're a bit of a hangover from back in the day where the rules were: if you had an open face helmet, you weren't allowed to punch them in the face. Which for me, what well, isn't enough to make wear an open face helmet. But yeah, there's a, the thing is, they are a, they're a military field helmet, and we've yeah. learned anything from history: what people wear to stop themselves getting hurt or to stop themselves getting killed are very different things so uh, let's move on to the next one of our uh, gallery of rogues <sighs> what do you think of that guys the bar boot the bar boot indeed now um, yeah. I don't think this is a boho optimised one particularly I, I, I pulled it off of an armourer's page but it's got no eye bars or anything but in general what I mean you if you had some bars across all those gaps yeah, I could see it. It would be really simple. You wouldn't have a great deal to maintain. Yeah, all those rivets there, but most of them look decorative anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you had if you had bars on it or a cage or something, I think that would work fine. Um, that being <laughs> said... <laughs> You're falling you into his trap sh- card. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the shaping of that helmet, your, uh, that helmet is basically the same as putting a piece Thank of gutter in around your head. Mm, yeah, flat. Into it. That, See, thing, uh, that thing is kept on your head by your head just sliding into it. There is no gap at the front. Like uh, It would be good if we had an image where you could turn it on the side. Mm. The Boa optimised versions of our boots I've seen are just horrendous, horrendous. They're just, yeah. Limited it's AC kind of, application. They peel the front out a little bit. It's mm. just right. So you're, you're, you're cosplaying a Battlestar Galactica Cylon, are you? <laughs> the big thing with these, again, is it's trying to do the things a Wolfred does, but doesn't do them as well. Yeah. You ain't got the vision. You ain't got the breeze. It's not three and a half centimetres away from your face. Wearing that, you can lose an eye very easily. You can have your teeth knocked out. If you've got a slightly big nose, you're going to feel people's gauntlets touch your face when you get punched yeah. in the face. And the amount of uh, the amount of kind of hidden safety bars you're going to need to have that in that is like I know authenticity is the elephant in the room, but mm. you've got to admit, but you would need a fair amount of vision bars, and it's just going to look stupid. It's going to look. It is going to completely detract away. Right. For me, again, it's what does that do that a Wolfrib doesn't? What The only reason you can want that is for aesthetics. And yeah. in my opinion, that's a bad reason to pick your protective equipment. What does that do that the clap visor doesn't do? That doesn't do anything in my eyes. Um, maybe you've got a particular sort of heroic idea of armour. Cool. It just seems hard. <laughs> It just seems half the time that people would get, that go with things like bar boot sallies are those that want the pageantry. They want a bit of role play in their life. And it just it just yeah. really baffles me that you have people that stood there and their their attitude is no one seems to be wearing this, so that must mean it's fucking awesome. <laughs> I will be unique. <laughs> okay, so I think we're united on that one as well. Um, yeah. but no one seems to be wearing this helmet. That that, that should worry me. And I have figured something out. Like no one else has. Yeah. So moving on to the next one. 
Kettle Elms. Oh, I had one of those. Uh, yeah, oh. that was a that was a that was a really cool experiment. But uh, yeah, no, let's not go down that route again. <laughs> so again, this relies on the hidden protection, like a nose. Also, you've got a massive cage underneath. For some reason, they put their strap on the outside, which I can't have them. Don't think uh, they know how the helmet works, do they? <laughs> but yeah, what are you, what, what are your guys' experiences with or against these? I mean, so I've not worn thing. one. But if if the cage in there's you know half decent, I couldn't see why it wouldn't work. Um, you know, it's it's aimed. Yeah, okay, you've got a bit of a le leverable um, lip. But if the cage is good enough to stop you getting struck, you know, you have your face smashed in when somebody punches you. Can't see why it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Ollie, how was uh, it wearing one? Oh, mate. So basically, they tend to come out as really, really heavy. It tends to be a heavy helmet that doesn't fit in a balanced way upon your head. You have the lip that goes all the way around it, and that is just a great opportunity to grab that and shove it up or pull the person down. Mm -hmm. the, they, they, yeah, generally, if you don't like the idea of a wolf rib, just imagine having just bars around the entirety of your face and the round of the back of your neck. That is the only bit of chain, you have. Yeah. Like, it's great if people are just going to hit you on top of the head, but hit you inside of the head, you get a lot of neck aches is a big thing with one of those helmets. So again, we get into the realms of it's trying to do some of the things that the better helmets do, but they don't do them as well. And you got that lip. Not only is it a bit of a steering wheel, but um, imagine yourself getting caught in a headlock or a hip throw or something. If someone gets their arm around that, you, you can't. You ain't you going can't anywhere, pull right? out. Your pull-out game will be weak. Uh, it's... <laughs> Like, I, again, it comes down to aesthetics or um, some Eastern kit. So, well, we're not covering Eastern kit here at all because West is best, and I've got no, none of us have got really any experience with the Eastern kits. So, with the aesthetics on this, you, uh, with the chin strap across the front, that is, that's not a mistake, that is meant to be there for authenticity. It is meant to look like someone is wearing a kettle hound mm. and uh, they've got a male koi on. Yeah. So, that's why the chin strap is there to make it look as if. You know, there isn't really hidden bars behind this. Because if you that look at the hidden sense. bars, the hidden bars are made to look a bit like a human face. So you've got the nose there. Just, I would say steer away from these helmets. Uh, mm. I, I love the way mine looked. I thought it looked fantastic. You, you did but look good in that kit. You had a brilliant Aventail, didn't you? You looked brilliant. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, it. doing that Aventail was a. a Mission about, yeah. <laughs> That's the but, thing. Um, when you start picking your kit based on aesthetics, you have to remember nobody looks good having their head shoved up their ass and thrown on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, no one looks good like that. So let's move on not. to um, the, the next helmet is one that people love but has no place for us, I believe. The Armet. High medieval. Yeah. The, the the it's the fundamental helmet of the chivalric, chivalric knights it looks beautiful wonderful piece of kit I wouldn't wear it <laughs> yeah I mean for all the reasons the thing that... is if you're gonna if you're gonna go with a helmet like this you're coming to really the kind of the close of what we do as in the period of history you're looking at you're gonna need full plate this really works with full plate and even mm -hmm. then full plate doesn't work in this sport in my opinion uh, you could get away with wearing this to say a really nice Corazina but as a helmet it is fixed around your neck you're looking at a lot more neck damage a lot more pain around the neck mm -hmm. um, something to consider as well is uh, something we haven't covered at the moment on helmets is liners like we have to have a particular sport liner which is a lot thicker than a yeah. hysterical helmet so whereas that looks like a human head now you add a sport liner to it it's going to be monstrous in its aspect. It's going to be huge. Yeah. Um, and again, we get back to complexity. Well, I've seen one of these used at Battle of the Nations 2017 in Barcelona. And I only noticed him. I think it was a Polish lad. I noticed him on the sidelines with blokes hitting his helmet, trying to straighten it out so he could take it off. <clears throat> yeah. Because, yeah, they've got so many... There are so many different parts to an armour. The only armour that I've ever seen... The, uh, well, the only, not the only armour I've seen, but uh, the only one that I've seen in continuous use was in the UK was a Northern Wolves fighter called Tom Flint who had one, but instead of having 
several different kind of bars apart from the front. What he had was a grill. Mm. And uh, he wore that with a back of breath. Uh, he fought at Battle of the Nations, but when I did ask him, he did say it was a failed experiment. It tended to put a lot of stress on his neck, and uh, he felt concussive for a hell of a lot more. Like, if you look at the way the back is kind of stretched, it kind of sits on mm. the back of your neck and goes yeah. over the dome of the back of your head. Whereas mm. the bassinet, the bassinet basically is a safe bucket you can chuck over your head. Um, yeah. But our net is made to, fill, you know, go with the contours of your head. Yeah, absolutely. So there be the problems. All right, so that's all the helmets I had lined up, lads. But now, um, just some general points like authenticity. What are the big problems with helmets at the moment, Ollie? What we what we see time and again are the big problems. Uh, strange shaping. Mm. Getting a yeah. lot of strange shaped heads. Uh, one of the famous ones, I can't remember the blacksmith's name offhand, but uh, he makes the, uh, the bassinets seem to almost kind of go a bit like the classical kind of alien head at the back. Yeah, the cone head, cone head helmets. Yeah. Um. Uh, kind of strange shaping, uh, sports optimization, going too far with kind of pulling chins right the way down. Yeah, the old yeah. Griffin fiasco. Yeah. Now, AC is often the elephant in the room, but the way I'm seeing it now is there are plenty of safe helmets. There's plenty of good helmets. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. And if you just... You don't need a Griffin to be safe. Yeah. There are other helmets you can wear. So if you buy nice or buy twice in all ways. If you're looking at a helmet, ask. And don't just ask your mate. Do not ask the smith. The smith will tell you <laughs> this is fine. He'll sell you a fucking stainless steel flip flop and tell you it's fine. Go to your country's AC commission and ask them. It's, it's the only way. Buy an ice or yeah. buy twice. But yeah, any other points you guys have got, please bring them up now. And uh, any other burning issues you have on helmets? I'll go over no, the I've got nothing else to add to that one. I mean, we've covered all the bases. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of helmets about there because you know, as people have, as, as the sports evolved, even in the last few last few years, you know, we've now got an abundance of na nails, na nasals kicking about. Whilst everyone moves up to wolf ribs, you're probably you're going to find that a lot of the newer fighters are going to opt for a second hand nasal because there's plenty of them out and they're going to be a bit cheaper. Um, I think I'd argue on that. I'd argue on that point because uh, when I started, even when you started, Joel, a lot of us were buying second-hand kits from the first generation of fighters in this sport. So they're kind of the second generation, and but I'm seeing a lot of our newer fighters now. Instead of buying second-hand, are really kind of going for new. Mm. Yeah. They tend to be, they are learning from uh, us that have gone before from, uh, yeah, from the mistakes of us. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, how much armour have I owned? How many helmets have I owned? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know, mate, I've only had two. <laughs> uh, sometimes, I, sometimes I look at videos and I think uh, I must be armouring pretty much half of the UK national team right now, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely at least 45% of Iskra wearing armor I used to own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true that. Very true. So, um... I have a 55% of owning armor, wearing armor Barney used to own. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I've got a full harness floating about scattered around the club, that's true. Oh. <laughs> uh, right then, lads, if that's everything, thank you very much for your time and your opinions. Um, so, let's just go over what we've done on the show today. We've seen some... Uh, We've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of the helmet world, really. Um, we've gone through why the popular helmets are popular and why they work. We've gone through some of the more exotic examples and why they ain't so good. We've learned a bit of AC. And remember, the golden rule is just always ask before you buy anything. So um, please subscribe to us on here and come back to us next time. Hopefully next time we can do the same thing again, but on weapons, the other thing people get excited about buying. So uh, thank you very much, lads, for coming on and hope to speak to you again thank next time. Me. See you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.